All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt, uh, here to talk about uh, building a scalable multi-protocol API gateway uh, with Envoy at Bloomberg. So uh, real quick, my name is Matt Pogel. I am a senior software engineer at Bloomberg. And for the past seven years, I've worked in Bloomberg's connectivity and, integ and integration engineering group, where I've mainly been using C++, Golang, Python to build resilient and secure connectivity solutions for different enterprise systems and financial protocols. So this is the Bloomberg Terminal, uh, the flagship product that we launched over 40 years ago, uh, though it obviously looked uh, quite different back then. Uh, the Terminal is a desktop application that we sell to uh, customers who want best-in-class financial data and uh, information. Uh, the way I like to think about it is anything that could be, uh, anything and everything that could be bought or sold, uh, or anything that could, anything and everything that could influence the price of anything that could be bought or sold can be found in the Terminal. That's over 400 billion uh, market data messages every day. Uh, now, I don't even work on any terminal functions. Um, as I said, I work in the enterprise connectivity platform team, uh, building out connectivity solutions, but I wanted to provide uh, some better context for what this connectivity is for. Uh, so we have all these terminal clients uh, running a huge range of terminal functions or a range of financial products. Much of this data comes from outside entities, banks, brokers, traders, exchanges, et cetera. And these functions are also pushing data out to customers as well. So how can this scale to tens of thousands of clients uh, across the world, uh, across networks, uh, across several different protocols? Uh, well, today I'll talk about uh, how we did it. So uh, given that this connectivity powers uh, countless terminal functions, it is undoubtedly incredibly important to our clients. And since uh, clients work in markets around the world, uh, there's very little downtime. Uh, and we've heard and worked with web API gateways uh, as a standard for managing vast, uh, complex HTTP domains. So naturally, we asked ourselves, how can we apply those ideas uh, to our non-HTTP-based connectivity? So let's break down the requirements we have for a connectivity solution. Well, as I mentioned, we need high availability and reliability, end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, we need to support long-live connections, uh, not just request response. Uh, we want to integrate with existing observability solutions, uh, allow custom authentication and authorization, uh, support the proxy protocol, and uh, dynamic connection routing. Uh, so we took these requirements, researched uh, many open source API gateways, in addition to Envoy, such as Kong, API6, HAProxy, just to name a few. Uh, obviously, since I'm here, we, we picked Envoy. So, uh, and that's because Envoy uh, checks all of our boxes. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this dynamic uh, connection routing in a moment. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, three protocols. Uh, IBM Message Queue, FIX, the Financial Information Exchange Protocol, SFTP, uh, the Secure File Transfer Protocol. So we're going to dive into each one of these protocols and talk about how Envoy uh, can be used to support it. Now, of course, there's also HTTP. Uh, but that's not the point of this talk today. So let's start building our proxy platform on IBM MQ. This is a proprietary message queue technology, uh, obviously by IBM, not Bloomberg, uh, that remains quite popular as a method to send and receive financial messages uh, in our domain. As with most uh, queuing solutions, these connections are long-lived. And it's made up of uh, one or more queue managers creating a uh, complex routing topology or asynchronous uh, messages between different systems. So how can, how can Envoy proxy it? Well, uh, while the protocol itself uh, is uh, proprietary and, and complex, the information about the connection, uh, i.e. the channel name, is actually uh, communicated as part of the TLS handshake. So we can use the TLS inspection filter here to capture that and the external authorization filter to send it to the MQ infrastructure team, who manages these queue managers. Uh, uh, we can send it to them for authentication and authorization. But how do we route the connection to the proper key manager? Well, given that the topology of the key managers is managed and uh, maintained by the MQ infrastructure team, that route has to come from them. Uh, so with a little tweaking, we can proxy the connection over HTTP using uh, dynamic metadata from the external authorization service uh, from that response that's coming from the MQ team. And then, of course, uh, we can end the chain with our TCP proxy filter. So what is this uh, HTTP tunnel filter? 
Uh, well, it, it's very similar to the tunnel filter in the TCP proxy filter, except a little more dynamic because we're using uh, the tunnel message from, uh, or the tunnel message is including information from the external service uh, that allows us to have this dynamicism without uh, putting all of that into our uh, uh, Envoy configuration. So uh, when a client connects to the first Envoy uh, at the network edge, it uses the external authorization filter to send the connection information to the MQ authorization service, which looks up the user, uh, which looks up the user and which queue manager they need to be connected to. Uh, the queue manager information is returned as supplementary metadata uh, in the response, and then our tunnel filter uses this to construct the HTTP connect message, which is then received by the next envoy uh, in our mesh and uh, uses the dynamic upstream from the HTTP connect message to connect to the right uh, queue manager. So um, next we move on to FIX, or the Financial Information Exchange Protocol. So um, it's used to get quotes, indicate interest, execute trades, and a whole host of other operations. Uh, this specification is open and readily available, uh, but it is fairly complicated, and we have a whole team uh, dedicated to managing our uh, fixed engine and its many customizations for various clients. Uh, so again, as with IBM MQ, these connections are long-lived, complex routing topology, and in this case, we also have active-passive uh, servers, so there's only one active uh, fixed server in the connection. Uh, so how can Envoy proxy it? Well, very similar to, to MQ. Um, actually, the, uh, these connections are also communicated over TLS uh, using certificates provided by Bloomberg, uh, which again uh, gives us the information about the incoming connections that we can use to identify that particular client and the particular fixed server that they need to get to. So uh, external authorization filter to be routed to the uh, fixed authorization service with information from the fixed team and their complex uh, fixed topology that they have. They know where this fixed server is. Our tunnel filter and our TCP proxy filter. So uh, thirdly, we have SFTP, or the secure uh, file transfer protocol. Uh, it's a tried and true method for uh, uploading and downloading files. Um, and like the previous two, uh, it can be woven into complex integrations for different financial products and even uh, other protocols. Uh, so. Um, <clears throat> However, instead of TLS, SFTP uses SSH uh, with username and passwords or, or public key authentication. Uh, so fortunately, there are many uh, implementations of, of SFTP that can be leveraged. Uh, with further extensions to Envoy for SSH, uh, we can support it too. Uh, so with a new SSH transport uh, socket, uh, our transport, uh, our, our tunnel filter, we can continue to use the HTTP to proxy this message, uh, this, uh, these SF SFTP connections uh, over Envoy. Now, uh, no platform would be accepted by uh, network admins without a comprehensive uh, security policy. So uh, <clears throat> taking advantage of uh, the native support between Envoy and uh, Aspire, we have end-to-end -end mutual TLS uh, from our edge to our service mesh. And with uh, external authorization services, we can integrate with our existing IAM policy engines. And by unifying all this connectivity into a single platform, uh, we have a consistent, centrally managed security policies across all of our protocol endpoints uh, instead of patchwork policies and controls. And of course, uh, no platform would be accepted by uh, supporting engineers and technicians like myself uh, without comprehensive monitoring. Uh, so, uh, for logs, uh, Envoy has uh, access and application logging. Uh, that integrates with our existing uh, log collection system we have at Bloomberg. Uh, for metrics, Envoy's massive collection of time series uh, metrics uh, can be exported in the StatsD format, uh, which is supported at Bloomberg. Uh, for traces, Envoy can support open telemetry format, which is support, uh, supported by our existing uh, trace collection system. And that, you should see where I'm going here. Uh, and lastly, uh, for connection events, there's ample opportunity to support, uh, to insert various gRPC services to collect and track this connection information that we can then uh, 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 send to our clients. So uh, that's what our enterprise connectivity platform looks like. Uh, so what I want you to take away from this, uh, first and foremost, Envoy's extensive uh, configuration options and open for extension design 
allows it to be adaptable for a variety of protocols, not just the protocols that we talked about here today, uh, but also others that come along down the road. And furthermore, Envoy's attention to security, integration with Spire, uh, and support for proxy protocol uh, <clears throat> makes it an easy sell to your network admin since it meets the high, high standard for securing uh, modern applications. And finally, Envoy's uh, many observability sources and formats uh, allowed us to integrate with our internal uh, monitoring systems from day one, uh, giving us the critical insight and analytic analytics that, uh, let's be honest, usually come as an afterthought. Well, thank you. That's my lightning talk. Uh, about 10 minutes. Thank you.